Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about angles on the coordinate plane, but not any kind of angle. Special angles. Unit circle angles. Let's get there. So we have an angle here. It's definitely obtuse, but you can see it's on the backdrop of the coordinate plane. That's going to be really important for us to be able to identify these types of things. Let's start with some vocabulary. The blue point, which is at the center of these two rays, is called the vertex, or a vertice. But because it's singular, it's just going to be the vertex. It's the blue point that is in the center of where both rays begin. The initial side, so now we're getting into some new things. The initial side is the yellow ray that is actually on the x-axis. Sidebar, if this is the coordinate plane, quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, and quadrant four, you might remember from rotations where we default counterclockwise. This is the natural state of order in terms of the unit circle and rotations in general. That's why this ray is the initial ray or the initial side, the beginning. The terminal side is the yellow ray that's the diagonal that's pointing out towards quadrant two. So basically the motion of this angle starts at its initial side, which is on the x-axis, and opens up and terminates or ends at the terminal side, which is in quadrant two. Now, there's a couple of ways these directions work. This is clearly counterclockwise, which is the default way of movement in rotations and on the coordinate plane. Positive angles, this is a positive angle. As you can see from the drawing up here, positive angles go counterclockwise. Negative angles, though, go clockwise from the initial side. Take a look at the uh, drawing below. Initial side is still on the x-axis, but if I have a negative angle, it's going to go clockwise around. So this measurement, they kind of look like the same angle measurements. One is going to be a positive value, and the other one is going to be a negative value. And yes, we have negative angle values. Welcome to pre-calculus. Okay, continuing on with the vocabulary. Coterminal angles are two angles that have the same terminal side. Huh? Let's take our angle from before. The first angle we have starts at the initial side and ends up at the terminal side. Its coterminal angle pair is the angle that starts at the initial side but goes around and meets it at its same terminal point. So think of it like this. This is the initial value or the initial angle. It goes counterclockwise and it is some value. Let's say that that's, that looks like this is kind of halfway through this 90 degree. So if this is 90, this might be 45. Let's say this is a 135 degree angle. Positive because this is a, the way the positive angles work. Its coterminal angle needs to be the difference of one revolution. So if the entire revolution around is 360 degrees, and 135 is taken up by going to the positive side, that means its coterminal angle is gonna go negative the same amount of distance to make 360 all around. So I would do 360 minus 135, and I'm gonna have a negative 225 degrees, because the two of these together would make a 360 degree angle. Forget about the negative and positive, it's just two different ways to get to the same point. Coterminal means they both meet at the same termination point or terminal end, okay? So we would add or subtract from one revolution around the vertex. A lot of these things we can just eyeball and then we can move on. Okay, kind of like coterminal angles, reference angles almost have the same idea. The only difference between a reference angle and a coterminal angle is I'm not trying to meet the angle from its initial point all the way around to its terminal point. All I'm trying to do is find the acute angle that matches from the axis to that terminal point. Huh? So, let's take a look at this angle here. We're opening up on the negative version of this, but that's not really important for us right now. I just wanna know what's the leftover part from the end of that angle or the terminal point of that angle to the axis. The x-axis is our reference point here. Never the y, only x. So I'm only looking for the difference that it made from the end of this angle to here. So I'm looking for just this part here. Now again, we've been using the same angle measurement for the majority of these problems. Let's say this is that 135 type angle. Always reference angles will be positive. 
So if this is 135, we know a straight line is 180. So our reference angle here is going to be 45 degrees. Again, not so much like coterminal, but it has the same idea. I'm trying to meet the difference between the end to another place or the end to the x-axis in this particular problem. Let's finish up. Okay, two quick examples for you, and then we'll be wrapped up for the day. In example one, let's draw theta. Now remember from previous videos, theta is just the angle measurement. We can certainly reference it as x, it doesn't matter, but theta is more preferred in trigonometry. So I wanna draw a 225 degree angle and label uh, theta prime as the coterminal angle point. And then this part's a little tricky. We have to write an expression that represents all other coterminal angles. What? So, 225 degrees, it certainly doesn't show as negative. So that means I'm gonna start from the initial point here, or the initial side, sorry about the vertex, and I'm gonna go up and around through quadrant one and quadrant two. So again, I'm gonna eyeball this as best I can. 90 degrees, 180. So I need another 45, so it's gonna be about here. That's not bad. So this is gonna be our 225 degree angle. We would label this as theta. Now, it's coterminal angle. Remember, coterminal is where they meet at the terminal point. If this represents a 225 degree angle, I am looking for the other side that began with its same initial point, but I'm kind of reversing it so that they meet at the same terminal or end. This has to be negative now, because again, I'm adding or subtracting one revolution from 360. So kind of like our other problem, 360 minus 225 is gonna give us our 135, but it's gonna be negative, and that's gonna be our theta prime. So. In relationship to 225 degrees, our coterminal angle is gonna be negative 135. Now, what about this second part? Write an expression in terms of K to represent any coterminal angle. Well, K is going to be something special here, and it's gonna represent our number of revolutions. Because in the unit circle, and in terms of angles in general, I can continue to go around and around and around. Some of you from some familiarity with the sports world is, you know that a 720 degree angle sometimes represents how many times either somebody flips in snowboarding or does kind of like a side turn. I used to be able to do that very often. I never did that, that was supposed to be funny. Hopefully you're laughing at home, it's okay. So K is gonna represent the number of revolutions that we can go about. So we can actually hit the same terminal angle multiple times. So we need to be able to write an expression to represent all of them because there is really an infinite amount of them. So let's see if we can do that. Here's what we need to know. First, we need to know the degree measurement of the initial angle. That one was gonna be 225. Next, we need to know what one revolution represents. Well, we're talking about a circle. So one revolution, meaning one time all the way around a circle, gets you to your starting point, which is 360 degrees. Now K represents the number of revolutions. Think of slope-intercept form like this. If I'm trying to find the number of revolutions times how much or how long it takes to make one revolution, that means I need to put K right next to 360 because we have to multiply those two values together to find out how many revolutions or how many degrees I will go around. For example, one revolution would ob obviously substitute one in for K and give me 360. Two revolutions at 720 and so on and so forth. Now, if I were to add those values, 360 degrees or 720 degrees to 225 degrees, I would get values that would just be multiple times around, but I would still end up on this line, right? Because I can just continue to make revolutions either one way or the other to get our values. Now, the link in between is gonna be a plus sign. So here is our expression to represent K revolutions to find the coterminal point, 225 plus 360K. Now, really quickly, let's just kind of put this into perspective. If 225 represents our first angle, that means I can add 360 to it to make our second coterminal point. So we would have 225 plus 360, which gives us 585. That would also be a coterminal point if I was coming around again to the other side meaning one more revolution. I could also subtract 360 if I went negative one revolutions, meaning the other way, or negative. 
and then I could do 225 minus 360 and get our negative 135 like we got before. Moving on. Okay, in examples two and three, we're gonna draw certain angle measurements in theta and state the reference angles for both. This should be relatively simple. So let's try number two. Draw 120 degrees and state the reference angle. Now remember, reference angles are the difference between wherever that angle ends up, meaning its terminal point, and the closest way to get to the x-axis, or the leftover part that we haven't accounted for yet. So 120 degrees is gonna be a positive angle. So again, I'm gonna start my initial value or my initial angle point at the x-axis on the positive side. Now 120, if this is 90, 30 is gonna be about right here or so. That looks good. 120 degrees. Now again, reference angle just means what's the difference between the angle where it terminated and the x-axis. And again, these are always acute. We never will have an obtuse reference angle and we won't have any negatives. So it's gonna be a positive acute angle. Clearly, we just have to find the difference between 180 and 120, which is going to be 60 degrees. So the reference angle for example two is gonna be 60 degrees. Go ahead and stop me and try example three. Okay. I know what you're saying to yourself. I tricked you. Not really. Kind of. So remember the couple of rules I told you about reference angles. Number one, they need to always be acute. Number two, they always need to be positive. So let's take a look and see what's happening here. Draw a negative 60 and state its reference angle. Well, negative 60 is an acute angle. It's just negative on the other side. So some of you were thinking, oh, well, I just need to find the difference between its terminal point and the x-axis. Well, you're half right and you're half wrong. Because if I went from negative 60 all the way around to the other side, then I would have an obtuse angle, which defeats the purpose of a reference angle. And then some of you are thinking, well, is it just 60 going backwards? Then you'd be right, doubly right. This was a trick question, certainly not intended, but I'm glad we did it. The reference angle to negative 60 is 60, because number one, it has to be an acute angle, and number two, it has to be the difference between wherever my terminal angle is or my terminal point is and its initial. It just so happens to be the same value. Now, normally, will you see this? No, you probably will never see this. But I'm glad I did it because it got you to think a little bit. Okay, things to remember about angles on the coordinate plane. Number one, the coordinate plane defaults to counterclockwise, much like rotations that you did in middle school. And sometimes some things that you did when we talked about graphing, certainly domain and range when we talk about algebra. Number two, co-terminal angles are actually really, really well developed in terms of what they mean. Co meaning sharing and terminal meaning terminates or ends and where those pieces meet. Number three, the reference angles, they are always acute and they are always the difference between its terminal end or point and the x-axis. Have a good day.